welcome to the University of Maryland Department of Emergency Medicine Oral Board's PEARLS presentation. The point of this brief presentation is to familiarize you with some of the tips and tricks which over the years we have found useful in preparation for the oral boards. The most important pearl to remember is to verbalize everything you do. The oral board format does not provide any significant visual stimuli or cues to guide you in your performance. And likewise, the examiner is not going to offer up a lot of information unless you request it. You have to drive this case. You have to ask for information that is pertinent to the patient. You have to ask about specific examination findings you're looking for. You have to cue the examiner when you are looking for specific labs or results. And you have to explain your medical decision making as you uh, proceed through the case. You have to provide verbal interpretations of any studies that you receive. Another aspect of verbalization, which is somewhat unintuitive, is that the examiner takes on the role of your nurses, the patient, any consultants that you have to talk to, in the first person. And when you engage them, you're supposed to engage them in the first person. For example, when you are addressing the patient, you address them by name. Mrs. Smith, what brings you to the emergency department today? This interaction is useful in that it helps put you into a role-playing mindset and should facilitate your performance through the case. It is also for this reason, because it is inherently unintuitive, that you take some time and practice this role-playing so you understand how the procedures work, how the case operates, and you can concentrate more on the medical aspects of the case than the nuances of the actual uh, performance. Oral board scenarios are very stressful, and they can be very distracting. It's relatively easy to lose your train of thought, as well as develop tunnel vision, especially because you lack all the visual cues that might otherwise redirect you to consider a broader differential. If this happens, the best thing to do is to stop, take a couple seconds to gather your thoughts, and reassess your patient. The 20 or 30 seconds it takes to reassess your patient will give you an opportunity to broaden your differential, to consider other diagnoses, or perhaps get other verbal cues from the examiner that will uh, further guide you towards the correct diagnosis and management plan. Consultants play a role in the oral board scenarios. However, usually that role is limited to facilitating a final disposition or transfer of a patient after you have completely worked them up in the ER. It is certainly okay to ask your examiner if a consultant is available, such as a cardiologist, to discuss a case or an EKG. However, usually you're going to find that they are not available, and the expectation is that you, as an emergency medicine physician, are able to manage this patient uh, as presented without any specialty assistance. You should be relieved to know that the oral board scenarios are not designed to pimp you on your pharmacologic dosing knowledge. That being said, you are expected to know doses of very commonly used medications, such as ACLS emergency medications, induction agents that are used for intubating patients and sedating patients, and commonly prescribed NSAIDs, um, such as Motrin. When in doubt, simply advise the examiner that you would refer to a prescribing reference and look up the dose prior to administering. Examinees are expected to be able to interpret any study that is normally ordered and interpreted in a working emergency department by emergency physicians. This includes laboratory studies, x-rays, ultrasounds, EKGs, and sometimes limited CT and MRI. When an examiner hands you a study result in the form of an actual EKG, or they hand you plain films that you are supposed to place on a light box for interpretation, you are expected to examine those studies and to verbalize your reading uh, to help guide your therapy from that point on. You may find yourself in a scenario where two viable treatment options exist. An example might be a patient with atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response and a systolic pressure of 80. If the patient is maintaining an alert, you may choose to administer a calcium channel blocker and try and pharmacologically lower their heart rate. Alternatively, you might say that the patient is hypotensive and therefore unstable and cardiovert that patient. Neither of these decisions is necessarily incorrect, 
the important thing to do is to document verbally your medical decision making and look for the patient's response. If the examiner was looking for a specific treatment plan, they may advise you that your initial therapy was ineffective, thereby prompting you to try an alternative method. As you're proceeding through your scenario and your patient begins to decompensate, you should take that opportunity to pause, reassess your patient, and consider whether or not you are doing everything appropriately. There are certainly cases in the oral board scenarios where the patient is supposed to decompensate and die no matter what you do. However, there are certainly cases in which inappropriate treatment will lead to a patient's decompensation and death. It is certainly important to try to excel on each one of the case scenarios. However, should you make a mistake and fail a single scenario, it is still possible to pass the overall oral boards. If you refer to your ABEM oral board hand guide, you can see the actual scoring schema that is used and the scenarios in which passing is possible uh, given a failing grade on a single scenario. It is also important to remember that a field case is presented uh, as one of your oral board scenarios, and this case does not count towards your score, for better or for worse. It is being tested to see how uh, examinees actually perform in aggregate to determine whether or not it will be included in further testing. The last pearl I have is to escape the hallways. In between your case scenarios, you should have approximately 10-15 minutes in which to prepare for your next scenario. Sitting in a dark, dingy motel hallway um, with other stressed out examinees is not exactly a recipe for success. If time permits, escape the hallways, go for a walk around the complex, um, or just get a breath of fresh air. It will help prepare you for your next examination. We hope you find these pearls useful and wish you good luck on your oral board preparations.